Hi y'all, this is Astro Dim here, giving y'all a little talk about Venus in Leo. I had to think about that because for some reason I'm thinking Cancer. I think it's because I just did the Mercury and Cancer video, so if you haven't seen that, check it out, okay? Um, check something right here. Okay, but yeah, um, just trying to fix this thing because the light is just wilding out here and I don't want to turn off the light. Cause then like you really can't see. I don't know. Y'all just gonna have to deal, okay? <laughs> okay. So anyways, um, we're gonna be talking about Venus in Leo, okay? So during this transit, we're gonna be quite um, self-expressive, right? Specifically when it comes to Venusian things such as beauty, uh, money, relationships. We're just gonna be showing out basically, just showing out showing um but in a creative way so we're gonna be like it's kind of like cancer where you're like expressing your emotions and expressing how you feel but we're doing it in a more creative way which is like fly and cool and um admirable and not so you know maybe crying whiny <laughs> and i'm not saying cancer is crying whiny because um Cancers are definitely emotional, but they're all spectrums of emotion, including like the touching, beautiful type of emotion. But Leo's a little bit more boisterous and fly and fun, and so they're gonna be very creative when they express themselves, okay? So um, that's definitely the case here. Now, um, again, like I said, we're gonna be self-expressive with like your self-worth, your uh, material worth, right um and to build that up we're gonna like kind of be expressive within that to build you know your self-worth your material worth your money your relationships or to even get relationships um the funny thing is i remember while doing my um aquarius reading tarot astro tarot reading that the queen of wands was the seventh house which is the opposite house of an aquarius rising person so it reminded me of um you know venus and leo type of energy of like showing out in relationships or trying to like look fly to get that relationship that you want whether the relationship is romantic or platonic if it's business or pleasure you know what i mean so these are the type of things you have to think about when it comes to this transit okay now depending on where it is on your chart kind of shows where that self-expression is going to be expressed right <laughs> so if it's between houses one through three um you're going to be self-expressive yourself um whether you do it with your appearance or trying to edge up and change up your personality whether you're using your self-expression to build up your money or build up yourself to get money or to just to build up yourself just to be more worthy feeling like you're worthy of the world or worthy of um, the things that you have in life um and you could be quite self-expressive within your community or how you speak and think about certain things you know how to have that creative side of speaking and thinking you know what i'm saying and um if it's in houses four through six um you are gonna be you're gonna kind of show your express expression towards um and be quite expressive towards People that you kind of see on an everyday basis, the bond might be close or not so close, but it's people that you kind of see often and all the time and you have no really choice <laughs> whether you see them or not. So like it could be like family members or people that live in your house, roommates, um, people that you work with, people that you, that's within your community where you do your do like kind of routine things and you see them while like walking around doing the rules, those routine things. Um, can be your children too. Um, and you could be quite self-expressive with the things that you actually create and bring to the table yourself. You might be even more talented. So that's kind of fly too. Um, if it's between houses seven through nine, then you're going to be expressive towards people or ideas and things that you choose to be in your life and choose to have a bond with. So it can be, um, a business partner or a romantic partner uh, someone that you really try to have a close tight tight bond with and like knows all your secrets and you knows you in and out uh, it can be what else even like philosophical ideas that you have that you're going to be more self-expressive and show your ideas and the philosophical thoughts that you 
do have or did kind of obtain you're gonna use creative ways to express them you know what i mean or use your talents to show people your ideas if that makes sense things like that and then lastly if, it, if it's between houses 10 through 12 you're gonna show it in big groups of people whether it's spiritual or physical okay so it could be um you could use your talents to kind of get the recognition and status that you want you could use your talents to um kind of just show out to society so people can perceive that you know that kind of flyness that you got um which is like again this very venusian so we're talking about beauty we're talking about money we're talking about um you know things that you create like the things that you, again that you express and create yourself or you can be quite self-expressive when it comes to the spiritual world so you can like in the astral world trying to like lose your dream and express how you feel to the things and energies that are around you that you don't quite see in the 3d okay so these are the ways how it could manifest in your life if you're interested more in how exactly it's going to work for you get a reading from me one question reading probably would be the best okay all right so next we're going to talk about the decants of this um transit um uh, so leo um in venus right again we're talking about being self-expressive when it comes to money love relationships your desires the things that you like actually desire and want um and things like that right um sorry this is like really loud <laughs> sorry anyways um the i believe see i lost my point now goodness gracious okay i'm straight i got it all right so <laughs> leo has three decans like any other sign and you know since leo is a fire sign the decans within leo are ruled specifically not only by the sun but co-ruled or maybe not co ruled sub ruled by fire planets okay so for instance um, Deccan 0 through 9 of Leo is ruled by the sun. So it's double sun is extremely expressive. So the first chunk of Leo and Venus, you're going to be extremely creative, ex <laughs> extremely expressive to the people that you love, to the people that you want to love, to the things that you want, desires you want. You're going to be extremely talented, extremely creative. You're going to just let the shit flow, okay, to get the things that you want, whether it's a person, a thing, a position, money, whatever. Whatever that you desire, you're going to use your creative juices to get it, and you're going to be loud with it. You can be loud with it literally, or you could be loud with it in the way you dress or the way you kind of bring yourself into a situation the thing is about like Leo Sun folks, they are in Leo Moon too. They can walk into the room and everyone sees them. You're going to be like that. You could be loud without even talking. You know what I mean? So you're going to, again, be quite expressive when it, um, and quite creative during, you know, the time when Leo is between zero and nine degrees. Um, when Venus, excuse me, is between zero and nine degrees Leo. All right. And next is um, Jupiter. So that second is between 10 degrees um, Leo and nine de 19 degrees Leo. All right, that's when Venus is over there. And that decade is interesting. So all like the desires that you want, that you want to be like super expressive with, like you're gonna notice that it's not only giving you new philosophical ideas on how to express yourself and what does it mean to express yourself, and the confidence and the um, talents that it kind of, you know, gives and brings and all that type of stuff, you're going to actually start seeing abundance. You're going to get something out of that actual, um, all that expressing you did in the first decade, okay? So you're going to notice things that pop off for you. It may not be big. Um, it may be small, but it could lead to something greater, you know, if you know your energy and kind of move you like kind of like play the right cards you know what i'm saying so um again jupiter is the um energy of abundance and prosperity good luck so you can really make things happen like after expressing yourself during the first decade you can continue of course to express yourself in the other decades but what this decade is going to do is look back 
to the first deck and to see when you were at your, you were at your most creative and then like it's going to look at that and you're going to get abundance from that but you can also get abundance while you're still being creative and fun and all that stuff during the second deck and you know what I'm you get what I'm saying right so um again this is when luck happens when you actually get things from your talents from the things that you create from your children even you know cuz Leo it represents children as well but again like you know you're not going to shine as bright as you did and be as creative as you did in the first decade but in the second decade you're gonna actually get some prosperity and abundance from it right um now abundance is funny it's a neutral word right prosperity is like good you know it's a positive word but abundance is neutral you can get abundance of something bad and you can get abundance of something good you know so be careful how you use that because yes jupiter is prosperity yes jupiter is good luck but there's also abundance and there's gonna be abundance of shit Right now, even though this is not really connected like that, because we're talking about decants, but currently transit Jupiter is retrograde. So, you know, you gotta chill for a second, all right? Kinda be good when you're doing your creative shit. Don't be, don't, don't be funny, all right? And then lastly, the third decade is, the, is in Mars. So this is kind of funny. It reminds me of like, Say you were super, super creative in the first decade and got some good luck in the second decade and in the third decade, right? You're not getting that prosperity no more. You're not getting the abundance anymore. Not as quickly and as easily as you did that, that you know, that sector of time, those like past um, 10 days, you know what I mean? Um, then you're going to be like, hey, well, hey, hey, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And so what it's going to do though, since you had a taste, of how you can get some prosperity and abundance from your talents and the things that you create and to get be and how it's connected to the desires you want the money you want the relationship you want you're gonna go forward you're gonna your gonna drive's gonna be on high you're gonna just push forward and get that thing that you want right because again mars represents drive motivation that jupiter decade is gonna motivate you for the third decade of leo and venus to go after what you want so you can get that similar abundance and prosperity that you got in the second decade. You get what I'm saying? What also can happen too, you could just get mad that you're not getting the same attention no more. And then you just stop and be a big baby about it. Because you know, we are talking about Leo here, okay? Don't get at me, Leos. I'm a Leo moon. I love Leos. But let's be real. We can be babies sometimes. Because, I mean, like, we were kings and queens right <laughs> in a past life especially your moons we were kings and queens so we're used to getting things our way right so sometimes we could be a big baby it's fine whatever you know <laughs> but anyways um it kind of reminds me of like you not getting the attention that you had in the second decade so now what you're gonna do is fight for the attention fight for the the accolade the accolades and the um the prosperity you know what i'm saying so that's how it's going to work with the decans all right now i'm definitely going to be looking at these notes because there's some aspects that i want to talk about during this motherfucking transit okay okay <laughs> all right so let's listen um i for the mercury and cancer what i did was like you know when Mercury is in zero degrees Cancer, when Mercury is in 15 degrees Cancer, and when Mercury is in 29 degrees Cancer. I'm going to switch up the, the degrees a little bit to, for it to make a little bit more sense. So what I'm going to do is um, when Venus is in 5 degrees Leo, when Venus is in 15 degrees Leo, and when Venus is in 25 degrees Leo, okay? The numbers make a little bit more sense to me, to me, you know? Let me know which, if you like one or the other, uh, you know, uh, we'll take a vote, figure it out, whatever. All right. So even though this doesn't count for a five degrees um, Leo, um, when Venus is in three degrees Leo, it's going to be conjuncting the moon, okay? And so it's interesting because we, <laughs> there's going to be not only an emotional connection to the, how we express ourselves and our creativity it's going to be a karmic connection because people forget that the moon is extremely extremely karmic okay and so we might be feeling some like things from the past lives or we might be 
actually expressing and exuding talents that we had in the past lives and realize like yo i didn't know i was good at this and you kind of realize and maybe have a past life regression and be like oh i've been good at this <laughs> you know what i mean so it's going to be quite interesting um when the moon conjunct um venus now it could also show too that uh your desires and the things that you actually want the, the you know you really really want it at this time because again the moon is like quite tumultuous and it kind of drives things up and then drives things down and so you're either gonna really really want the desires that the or the money or the relationship or you're gonna like eh, i'm not gonna really want it no more depends on how the moon really affects you um because the moon will be waning I, most likely people are not gonna really care for the desires as they what they want they're just gonna be wanting to express themselves for themselves not for something specifically you know so that's something to actually look forward to too and again like your emotions are gonna be kind of up and down during this transit or during that day it's gonna probably last a day or two so be on the watch out for that um the move will be also um conjuncting north node in venus of course right so let's talk about that and how that's going to affect it uh that actually even shows how much it truly is karmic right if you expressing yourself because the moon is karmic north node is karmic in a way of your future lives and your current life um and so it's kind of showing you venus the desires and the thing like and your desires is connected to money and relationships and stuff and love um so it wherever it affects you it affects you that way but your desires um of your past life which is your moon and your current life which is like your north node and how they all string together that's what it's basically showing you know so um be on the lookout for um when um venus is in three degrees leo i think that's actually going to be tomorrow on saturday june 16th and um june 17th so be on the lookout guys because it's like some powerful information that you're going to get you might even get a past life regression if you try your best you might get it naturally but if you like really work on it put you know actually like put some intentions on it it could work you know it'll be fly but with just venus conjunct north node Again, you're going to be kind of reflecting on your desires, your wants within love and relationships and money and self-worth and all that stuff. And you're going to see what you need to do and how you're going to, how you need to align yourself to get to the life path. How is, how your desires and wants is connected to your life path and what you need to do to push forward for it and go for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's, you're going to kind of, again, with this, with North Node and Leo in general, like, even though your north node may not be in leo all 12 signs are encompassed with your destiny in general so it's gonna sh it's gonna kind of it's kind of highlighting the self-expression of your destiny or your life path so even though my north node is in pisces um i'm using north node in leo to kind of understand how i need to express myself and use my talents um through leo to get to my pisces north node path you get what i'm saying so it's kind of like that so reflect on that and see how that goes and work how that works out for you again if you're interested for more specific information go ahead and get a reading from me okay i'm gonna stop and go to the next aspect all right <laughs> um next one venus is gonna be squaring uranus now uranus is in taurus okay so what's gonna really be happening is we're gonna <laughs> this is interesting because like i remember how i was telling you how the first decade is quite interesting because it is you like express yourself using all your creative talents using all your creative juices and you just kind of turn it out the interesting thing is though nothing is coming out of it and nothing is coming out of it because it's squaring uranus right and things will not come out of it until it's out of that square and it's going to be actually out of that square 
when it's in the second decade, which when prosperity comes. So you see how it all goes together? Shit, it's so fly. Love astrology, it's so dope. But it all comes together, right? So again, Uranus is the energy of not only originality and individuality, but of random sudden, sudden events. So um, you won't get that like magical music deal this time. That could happen. You never know how the rest of your chart's looking, but most likely you ain't. And it is because, you know, you the sudden events kind of energy. It's like the face is different this way while, you know, Venus is this way. So they're not even really seeing and understanding each other at this moment. Uh, so the energies are not blending well. You know, your individuality is trying to be more on the focused side and more focused on, um, again, like your self-worth and all that stuff. But with the Leo energy, even though Venus and Taurus have a connection, but the Leo, um, your, your, your desires and wants and your self-worth is not trying to be steady. It's trying to create. Is trying to be creative. It's trying to go out there and show out. And so it's not trying to be stable. It's trying to show out. And it's all conflicting. It's not, it's not a good look. Okay. Um, but the thing is, it's lovely about Venus. It moves fast. So it's going to skedaddle his little ass out of there. And you're not going to even worry about that square anymore. Not anymore ever. But anymore recent. I don't know. Shit. <laughs> next is um this venus is also going to be trining chiron which is beautiful i mentioned how mercury is trining um chiron with the mercury and cancer in a video this is awesome this is really really lovely you are going to really desire trying to help other people who kind of went through the same childhood traumas as you um and you're going to try to help them get out of that situation so they don't have to suffer as much as you did. Um, you also are going to reflect back on your childhood trauma and the, the things and desires that you want. Um, and you're actually going to like see like, okay, maybe I had someone tell me that I'm not good enough to get this. But you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get this. You know what I mean? So you're going to, it's going to be reflecting, but you're going to be reflecting like on a, with a good level head to get the things that you want okay and um might sound like a little petty like oh you gotta go back and like back to your childhood and try to get the things that you could never get but whatever satisfies you and makes you happy go for it man what else but i really see it as you kind of like seeing just it could be just a person and it could just be a five minute uh situation where you see someone who kind of went through something similar as you and you're really going to um, try to help them so they won't go through the same issues and traumas that you had to go through in your earlier life, okay? Um, lastly, with this decade for five degrees Venus, it's going to be opposite Mars. Uh, so basically, your drive, you know, your drive is going to be wanting to be like uh, more on the contemplative thinking and planning side kind of sitting on an idea and figuring out different ways on how it could work while your um, Venus, which is your desires, you know, not your motivation, but your actual desires and things that you want to do, it's going to want to do. You know what I mean? It's going, you know, your desire with Venus and Leo, you're going to want to push forward on doing certain things like actually physically doing things so your motivation is more on a contemplative side your um desires and wants is really telling you like yes you want this now like stop thinking about it and do it so you're going to be conflicting so um try to kind of understand that energy um sometimes with mars and mercury it's tricky because you, you uh, mars and mercury wow mars and aquarius or mars and any fixed sign because you just so focused and motivated on planning that you forget to do um and you can get lost i would say do just because it's gonna be right before all these damn like retrogrades popping off so just do as fast as you can um there's already mad retrogrades happening actually i think neptune is gonna be retrograding jupiter actually no it probably is best to chill and plan yeah i'll say chill and plan even though those plans are not retrograding, other plans are retrograding and they might be messing things up. 
So you can literally do both. I would say go within and see what will, will fit best for you because it really, depending on your chart, it could be a good idea to push forward, but it could be a good idea to continue to plan, okay? Um, next, we're going to be talking about the second decade when Venus is in 15 degrees Leo, okay? We only have two, um, to me, at least two notable aspects. There's other aspects too, but I don't really be talking about... Um, I talk about like sex style and shit, but I don't be really talking about like in conjuncts that much and semi sex styles and semi squares. But I might mention one or two. Okay. <laughs> so when Venus is 15 degrees Leo, um, it looks like that is actually going to be squaring Jupiter, a uh, retrograded Jupiter. Okay. <laughs> so, mm, okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, Jupiter is retrograding, so that means that Jupiter wants you to be more reflective and introspective on um, thing when it comes when it comes to like your abundance, your good luck, your prosperity um, in the past, right? Especially specifically the past year um, or past twelve months, but it really wants you to think on your philosophical ideas and how it's connected to your prosperity and abundance and how you can kind of change your way of thinking change of way of being to get what you want and to get the things that you deserve in this life okay and so it really wants you to be uh, more introspective but um venus again like i was mentioning before and um i think with mars uh it wants to do it wants to get the desires it wants to express your desires it wants to be creative and just go and do right it kind of actually reminds me a little bit of the the Mars energy but it's going to be um, actually in a Jupiter energy so it's going to be quite interesting because it's in the Jupiter decade this Leo and Venus you're not gonna you're not gonna really get anything until you really change your philosophical think um, thoughts and ideas because those philosophical thoughts and ideas is going to change how you think and how you speak in your thought processes which is funny because it's kind of connected to this mercury video that i did but it's kind of it's going to your philosophical thoughts is going to change how you speak and how you think and how you manifest and manifesting gives you the abundance gives you the prosperity that you want and that you're supposed to be getting during this decade so jupiter is not as like tough and mean as like saturn and pluto when you don't do it is do what it wants you to do but it ain't gonna give you the gifts like it's like that uncle that always comes for like fifty dollars for you but you haven't told him happy birthday so he really didn't give you for you forgot his birthday he forgot you fifty dollars for thanksgiving it's like that okay so just listen to jupiter okay <laughs> kind of understand the philosophical thoughts and all that stuff and um kind of reflect on it be introspective about it because you're really gonna start thinking about different ways on how to better your manifestation power okay so do that and whatever philosophical thoughts you want to get into get into is he's your world squirrel whatever works for you works for you okay um the last one for the 15 degrees in venus can't be my own hair writing but Okay, so this Venus is actually going to be in conjunct in Pisces, a, a, a Pisces Neptune that is retrograded. Eesh. Eesh. Okay, so in, in conjunctions is really interesting. Um, I'm the, I don't really talk about them when I talk about aspects, but it's very powerful and very interesting. So let me explain it to you. It's five signs away from the actual planet, okay? And so it's it's like not opposite but it's like the before and after the opposite sign of that planet so it's quite interesting because when you think about in conjuncts it's like not in the same modality not in the same element not even in the same season so with in conjunctions they just they it's not like they don't like each other they just don't get each other <laughs> you know what i mean because there's it, a thin line between love and hate so there's a thin line between like you totally understand each other and totally like disagreeing with each other usually disagreements there's a line of like agreement agreement you know what i mean and so when it comes to in conjuncts where they don't have the same modality element or season they're just like you're just there and i don't get you but i'm just gonna watch 
and it's gonna be uncomfortable and we're just not the energy's gonna be off but i'm gonna learn something by just watching that's what that's what anchor junk reminds me right and so with this venus and conjunct Pi uh, pisces retrograde See, Pisces, uh, Pisces retrograde, Neptune retrograde. Neptune is all about spirituality. It's in Pisces, which is again about the unknown, the spirituality, and the yourself undoing. It's mutable water, so it's your, it's flexible emotions. Emotions going here to there to there to there, and it's that's that's Neptune's sign, you know. So it's going to be really really heavy. So with it retrograde, it really wants you to be reflective and introspective about your ideas about the unknown and spirituality right and so you really are supposed to just chill out and like really just be and surrender to your introspective mind you know what i mean you're not supposed to be kind of 3d like venus try to show out for the gram and shit trying to show out and look a certain way trying to show out your talents like yes your talents are god-given you worked hard on them they're wonderful but there's other things that you need to be work, work worried about spiritually and what's connected to your spirit and your soul so um neptune is similar to jupiter where you're like oh you should listen to it before like kind of ruined your life a little bit <laughs> it'll do it in a nice way but the life your life will be ruined so it's good to be introspective and it's kind of like it's weird like you're gonna kind of it's not gonna be as rough as a square um but it's kind of it's gonna be like your spiritual side your, your your spirit and your spirituality and even like your guides and your higher self it's really not gonna get your whole venus side your your wants and your desires and so you might actually like jupiter this jupiter decking um venus and leo might give you the things that you want and you might be happy for a second but deep down inside and within your spirit you're gonna be like oh, what's this for did i really need this like yeah it made things a little easier but i'm not settled i'm not fine i'm not you know content and with you not being content it kind of reminds me of the third decking where you you're like realizing that okay i need to keep going and keep getting at you know these desires hard and you're feeling like you need to get get to the desires hard because you're still not fulfilled but the reason why you're not fulfilled is not because you want more things more things that you desire you're not fulfilled because you're not being introspective within your spirituality and the unknown like venus um excuse me like pisces retrograde neptune want you to be okay Ah, that was some that's a word right there that was a motherfucking word all right <laughs> next is uh 25 degrees venus so 25 degrees venus um i see two okay um uh, actually no i'm gonna talk about one i'm gonna talk about one um yeah because it's like yeah i'm gonna talk about one okay it's in conjunct Pluto and in conjunct Chiron, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about, if you want me to talk about it, I'll make a part two if you need me to, okay? But I'm going to talk about uh, 25 degrees Venus and Leo trying Uranus, right? And so remember how I said it was squaring Uranus in the first decade of Venus? Now it's going to be trining it. So... That motivation, you know, with the third decade, um, Venus is in Mars, you being motivated, you fighting for um, the things that you want, your desires. You know, the universe is not, is gonna, it wants you to be introspective, but it's not gonna like have you work extra hard and not get anything out of it. And so Uranus might pop up a situation that kind of serves you to get the desires that you want or make you think you think of an awesome idea using your weirdness and individuality to become more creative become more fly become more noticeable which will then get you the desires that you want okay and um yeah that would be dope <laughs> it's trining too so like again your individuality and your creativity are just really blending and getting each other the thing is again with trines though Try energy, you'd be thinking like, oh, I got the sauce now. 
everything's fly now i don't gotta worry about this i'm always gonna feel like this now as i hit my groove no you're not gonna always feel like this you just hit a groove for a short while venus moves fast it ain't gonna work okay it ain't gonna work forever so take advantage of that energy as soon as you start seeing this um this trine happening go for it when it's 25 degrees venus in leo go for it so you can get that automatic awesome thing happening to you okay all right so this that is my venus and leo transit talk for 2018 um i forgot when it ends i know i'm sorry but it's in sometime in july so i'll put the information down there but it starts june 13th right now it's june 15th the end sometime in july sorry i don't have the information out there um, but it's about a month long because Venus moves around the same time, like same time frame as um, Earth. So it's about a month long. Okay, so definitely take advantage of this lovely, wonderful energy. Be fly, be your individual you, be your creative you and can really get you somewhere. Okay, please comment, like, su subscribe, share, care, all that good stuff. Um, follow me on Instagram on and Twitter. Um, on Instagram, I'm the, T-H-E underscore Astro Dim, A-S-T-R-O-D-I-M. I am Astro Dim on Twitter, Astro Dim 7 on YouTube. Um, I am M-I-D slash 7 on Snapchat. Also on Twitter, like my actual handle name is I M M I D D I M M I, um, which is Emmett Dimmy. My name, my first name backwards and frontwards and uh if you want to email me my email is the number seven t h h i g h e n t at gmail.com that's seventh high entertainment.com entertainment is abbreviated though and then lastly i have a podcast called my bed in astrology that's fly as fuck it is on all almost all podcast platforms except for itunes and no no except for spotify and title sorry it's on itunes and google play and all the other cool places okay all right y'all i'm done talking i feel like i've been talking my face off soon i'm gonna be talking about mars retrograde or something like that one of these things are happening soon so get ready to like continuously see this face this leo moon face this expressive ass person okay <laughs> all right Love you guys. Enjoy. Peace.